Welcome to Madarsa Al Mahdi, one of the establishments of Mustafa International, a university which is a center point for the accumulation of knowledge aiming to enlighten its students in the Islamic sciences, otherwise known as Hawza. The Hawza is, is not what many people think is that you come here and after a year or two you go back to your country and you be the Imama and you deliver speeches. That's not what Hawza is about. There are students here from as far east as Japan and as far west as America. And you still have the opportunity to join the caravan of your Imam, of the Imam of your time. Right? The most direct way is this. Like the way of the house. Uh -huh. You know? Imam Musab Qadim says that home is the haram of Ahlul Bayt. Yeah, many men have claimed greatness throughout the ages Many have stood on tiptoes and sung their praises Many men and women have passed through changing faces and status Face it, since times of ancient Homo sapiens crave guidance in all races Look to people of the Lord to deliver messages Then shot the messengers, didn't like what they came with How long will we kill our prophets? Marley said it blatantly 124,000 men of piety Must talk themselves, their families and their communities Handful were chosen to wreck nations Relate recitations to the masses and teach humanity One was selected as the seal of the prophets Like the scholars say I won't take too much time But let me drop it I'm talking about Muhammad The inheritor of Adam, Noah, Moses Most minds don't know this The truth was found in holy pages Here people of all ages and ethnicities, from different financial backgrounds and social classes, are educated in the religion for the sole purpose of spreading the pristine teachings of Muhammad and the holy progeny of Muhammad. One of the most important things that we should know is that the Hawza is a holy place. It is a place of knowledge. It is a place to gain this holy knowledge and to be better. Today, we intend, by the grace of God, to give you an inside look into one of the most influential institutions on the face of the planet. Now, of course, Madarsa al Mahdi is an educational institution. It's a university, and at the end of the course, you will qualify, God willing, with a certificate of language. Farsi, of course. Now, having said that, there is something which Madarsa al Mahdi has, which no other university in the world does. What is it? The house is like a haram. It's like a living haram. Like, it has the same holy sanctity because the people studying here are literally going to bridge the gap between the old generation and the, and the new generation and if they have the real if they have the true if they have the true basically if they have the true guidance and the right tools but with their own personality in the right akhlaqi manner they can do wonders the life in scotland and you're quite familiar with it as well Hi. is very different to it's not a very Islamic life. It's, don't get me wrong, there's Islamic people, but the life itself is not very Islamic. Yeah, guys, why don't we? The environment. Now, it can be argued that while a secular education, such as any university in the West or in the East, will give you a career path, and there are other motives for it as well, there's something which Madras al Mahdi and the Hawza has to offer. While secular education caters for the needs of the body and the mind, 
The soul is missing. The hosa caters for the needs of the complete human being. The mind, soul and body. Upon arriving at Madar al Mahdi, after discovering that you've just travelled to several different offices for no apparent reason, you will eventually, God willing, be offered an interview by the principal himself, where he will ask you a series of intimidating and personal questions. Do you smoke cigarette? Have you had a girlfriend before? Uh, please give me your paper. Yeah, this is yeah. my paper. Mm, mashallah. Uh, you are from England, right? Yeah, Scotland. Scotland. Yes. In England. How old are you? I'm 23 years old. 23? Yes. What? Mashallah, your face says less. Yes. Uh, very nice. You're not married, of course. No, I'm not married. Because your face says not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Inshallah, after one year or two years, inshallah, yes. inshallah you can do it. Yes. Or maybe sooner. Okay. Inshallah. I pray for you for this. And if you face a, any problem, okay. inshallah, uh, let me know and we try to yes. solve it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. One of the first things you'll notice when you come here is that there are no toilets, only holes in the ground. But then you'll discover that there is a toilet on the third floor. You'll probably, if you're from the West, do a prayer of thanks thereafter. If you make it that far, God willing, you'll be shown to your room. Of course, you will have to share it with several other people. After arriving at Al-Mahdi, going through the interview, being shown to your room, settling down, you'll be introduced to something which might not be quite to your taste. The food is, uh, although it's okay, you can't eat it, you won't starve. But if you are if you some you, if you are used to very good and delicious fresh mama is cooking for you food, then no, <laughs> then yeah. it's it's just not that level, you know. If you have like uh, orma sabzi, orma sabzi, if you eat that at home, then it's one of the best uh, meals the Iranians can serve, right? Like and then you eat the same orma sabzi. Here, yeah. at the school, at the, at the madrasa, right? And it's just something really weird. It's a green slime stuff. Right, so let's find out what we've got for lunch today. It's different, really. Only the name is same. Okay, okay. What, what about outside the Hamza? Like generally Iranian restaurants and stuff like and that? If you try like Jigar or something like that, if you're used to it, then it's really good. The food, it's the food another, food it's another culture. Whenever again. you walk into a shop yeah, over yeah. here, I, I honestly yeah. do feel yeah. good yeah. lost. Like, yeah, liver. Should I buy that cake? I can buy that cake, but it's not going to taste Because I can do one thing, like there's an Iranian in Glasgow and his name is Sobhani. Everyone must know him. He's very famous. And the way we are walking around here saying, oh, we hate Iranian food, we don't like it, we prefer food back home. The exact same way he was over, like over there. Uh -huh. like, he's like, oh, in UK, the food I don't like here, your Pakistani food is too much spicy. Uh -huh. I don't like the burgers here or nothing. I love Iranian food. Yeah. So it depends on the culture, like which culture yeah, you're from. True. He's from Iraq, maybe if we go to Iraq, we won't like the food as much as he likes it. Or if he comes to our country, it just depends where you're from and yeah. your culture, you know? Yeah, that's where we get our uh, hot water from. For tea yeah. and... For coffee, for anything. Yeah. Like, anything. From this Rwanda. is Habdur from Rwanda. This is my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Angristan. Yeah. This is milk we used to drink every day uh, at lunch time, yeah. sometimes at dinner. This is basically do. It's not milk, it's like um, a salty yogurt drink. And they serve it to us every other meal. It's like Iran. Iran, Iran. Iran, Iran. Iran, Iran. 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 We call it Germany Iran. Oh, you get this in there? Yeah, yeah. I never had this until I, this, until I came here. This is actually the, uh, the national drink of Iran. The students here have come from the four corners of the globe. They've left behind their homes, their families, 
in some cases successful careers, all to come here, gain knowledge so that they could return, inshallah, by the grace of God, and to spread that knowledge. Back in the UK, like, you see people from other environments, other countries, but, but when, you come come here, when you come here, you live with them, you get to know them, and then you like, uh, you, have, you get to learn from them, you know what I mean? Mm. What, what do you think about that? Well, I've, I've said this so many times. Yeah. The reason, the one, the main reason I love this madrasa yeah. and every madrasa that exists is because it's like you have the whole world under one roof. Yeah. You name a country. Like every country. You any, name any. you name a country. Azerbaijan, as, Turkey, Azerbaijan Turkey, Djibouti, Turkey, 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 Scotland, uh, Hindustan, America, Hindustan, Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan. The people that you meet on this journey, like they're from com some people are from like their backgrounds, like complete geniuses. Like for for example, this one person like, comes straight to my head. Some people from jo Georgetown University. Some people, they, they, they've done really good, like extremely academic degrees, like op optometry, um, math majors, and a lot of good stuff. And, and some people they form the complete opposite end of the scale. Like for instance, some of them didn't even finish school. Some of them haven't even finished. They haven't even the, done the A levels. However, when they come here, like that that completely kind of goes out the window. So. That for me is one of the most beautiful things about the Hoza is that you don't you don't only learn about yourself, you don't only learn about the same culture, you learn about other cultures or people that you're not even going to meet. Meet. Like for example, I'll give you another example. His brother might been from Japan. 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 Yeah. I never met a Japanese person before. Never. You see them in never. films. You see them in films. films. And even then, it's old films. Old films. So that person, me meeting him and seeing his clock, which was amazing, by the way. Yeah. It yeah, was absol absolutely amazing. Next level clock. Yeah. It's, it's very, very beautiful clock there. But just meeting that person and having the opportunity to talk to him is a very beautiful thing in my eyes. And I, I, I remember when I first came, I think it was like a month, I was really interested. I was just asking people a month or two. I was like, what's your name? Why did you come? What do you want to do? And I, even like the first thing is that you have a language barrier. So like you're, you're saying it in Farsi, you're saying, it, you're saying it in a language that you don't even know. Not to mention the culture shock. The majority of the Islamic books are in Farsi and Arabic. Arabic. That's the two main languages they are in. Yeah. I was reading one day the Quran in English. And then when I came here, I read it in Farsi. In Farsi. Was that a big I thought I was reading two different books. And the Imam says, he said, Sabahna wa sabahatil malaika. Hamadna wa hamadatil malaika. Hallalna wa hallalatil malaika. Kabbarna wa kabbaratil malaika. So what an amazing statement. What an amazing statement. He says, we said Subhanallah and the Malaika. They learned from us, from the Ahlul Bayt. The translation is so much closer from uh, Farsi to uh, from Arabic to Farsi than it is from Arabic to English. The letter Fa in the Arabic, if you use that, it means that something uh, something results from the other one. You know, if you say I did that, Fa, he did that, then the it act. So therefore, yeah. So the act of him, therefore, yeah, he it results from my acting. So he is saying, we said Subhanallah. Therefore, from this act, it is resulting that the angels said Subhanallah. We said Alhamdulillah. Therefore, the angels said Alhamdulillah. We said La ilaha illallah. Therefore, the malaika said La ilaha illallah. We said Allahu Akbar. Therefore. The Malaika said Allah. Allah. Many people when they come here, like, um, they gain a lot of knowledge and they gain everything they need. And Alhamdulillah, they are successful. But remember one thing, when you come here, you leave many things behind. And like, I'm not talking about the material things, like your cars or your work or your job. Forget that. I mean your family. You leave your family behind and I know like religion is really important but after religion is family 
you miss your mom, your father, your brothers. You will find it hard. It's a lie to say, oh, you're going to come here, you're going to love it, and you're going to be like, oh my god, it's such a spiritual. You know, it's going to be hard. Some days you're going to be like, you know what, I just want to go back and see my mom. I want to go back and see my brother. I want to go back and. You do feel that. There's may, many a night that I'm on the roof with brothers and they're like, oh, it's my sister's birthday today. Oh, my cousin got married. Yo, this is our brother Asad from Canada. He has been here for eight months now and uh, he made it through Persian and uh, Tamhiriya, which is the basics of Islam. So this guy, he understands it proper fast. He has a good understanding of everything and the rest of the Aqaid book he did on his own um, and he made it well. That was amazing, proper smart guy. And now uh, he's going back to Canada and leaving us alone. Uh, he's one of the best guys I know and a lot of people they don't uh, see how good he actually is. You get, you have to get to know him to understand what a personality is behind his face. But the fact that these people come here to learn, and because it's, it's like it's not like physics or science or whatnot, you just memorize. It's a whole um, lifestyle. Well, I mean, I'd say that it's more about changing yourself. Right. First off, that's what it is. Before you try to think about changing anyone else or changing anyone else's views or a community or whatnot, is you change yourself. And I don't mean you change your clothes and just wear a distasha and you know that you know topi or whatnot. No, it's, it's that's not what it's about. It's about you changing like your belief, your faith, who you actually are, what you actually believe in, and what needs and intentions you're going on with. That's what I mean by change. So when you have brought that change in, when you have brought that change in, then when you go into the world, even if you're wearing jeans and normal clothes, it won't matter because what you preach and what you talk about and what knowledge you have and what needs and intention you do the stuff with, that's what touches the people, not how you look like. I've heard stories of like all the greats, Ayatollah Bahjat, I've heard stories from like Ayatollah Borojordi, Ayatollah Khomeini, Ayatollah Khamenei, Ayatollah Sistani, all these great people that like, had their slaved way, they studied Namaz al Shab, they tiptoed through the corridors, the akhlaq was par, it was amazing. And like I came here and I was like, yeah, I've got to, I've got to really fix up, man. I've got to like, grab the reins and control myself from what I, like, my akhlaq isn't the best of akhlaq. Even the grand Ayatollah, Ayatollah Subhani, uh, Ayatollah Sistani, Every Ayatollah you talk to, that's at a high stage. And if you ask them, are you, do you have room for improvement? What's the first thing they're going to say? Of course they do. Of course. Of course. He says that two losses and gains are made in this world. They're made in the afterworld. Right? Two losses when you lose money or whatnot, it's not made in this world. Time goes by. But true losses in the afterworld when, you uh, when you've lost yourself in front of God. Right? You lost your loved one, your family. And true gains is if you gain heaven, if you gain that love of the Ahl bayt and of God, you know what I mean? That's true gain. So understanding what the reality is and what we're living in is the hard part. But when you separate those, when you open your eyes even a little bit, that's when you understand that these fast cars and big money and all this stuff is it's not, you know, the meaning of life. It's not what you're born to do. We are really, really, really blessed to be in home. If you think about it, how high is the status of Najaf in Karbala, but even then, Imam Musa Al-Qazim says that Qom is the Haram of Ahl al-Bayt. And now, uh, he's going back to Canada and leaving us alone, and that's proper sad. But uh, we hope that he will have a nice time there, he will enjoy it there. For me, I, 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 can't, I don't see no difference between the brothers that I've met here and my actual brother back at home. Like, it's, it's that close. Like, when one leaves, when one leaves, like, you really feel it. Like. As a youth, you can run after cars because you have the power to. You can work, you know, 12 hours a day and earn money or whatnot. But at the same time, you'd be wasting your life. You know what I mean? You'd be just chasing this world. You have to look at the bigger picture, right? Life is like, <laughs> life is barely like some people don't reach it. I have a friend who died like two months ago. He's the same age as me. Who knows if I live to see the next day. There's no point in ruining yourself and you know this stress and whatnot it cannot it can it might affect your belief or your faith or your talk or whatnot it can affect everything why ruin yourself over this stuff you know what i mean you have to look at the bigger picture overall you yeah. have to put your faith in god you have to understand that you know even if there is injustice being done to you that on the day of you know Qiyamah, that um god is out there he is just and, you know what i mean whatever injustice has been done to you or whatever you're feeling sad about it will be repaid you know what i mean it, it's nothing to stress about
you know, after learning all this stuff about Islam, we're not, I didn't learn a lot, but whatever I did learn, it helped me realize the fact that it's pointless. It's pointless to die over problems in this world. Okay, I might see him in four months' time, five months' time, or whatnot. I probably speak to him on WhatsApp, speak to him on the phone. But it's different. It's like it's like a, your blood brother has left. Um, some brothers like they don't even leave and go back to the country. They move on to another house. Like right now, I'm in the basics, so I'm here for about a year or two. And from here, you move on to another house where you where you're there for about. Well, it depends how long you want to study there for. But when when the guys leave from here and go there, it's like just down the road or something. But you're like. Ah, uh, he's, he's the guy's left or whatnot. So I, I don't know how to explain properly. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam once said, "Seek knowledge even if you have to go as far as China." This place stands as evidence to the fact that some people are willing to go the distance. My brothers and sisters, whoever want to come to the house, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, if you come here, come with an intention to spread knowledge. By your help, if you come here and if you gain that knowledge and if you gain that true essence of Islam, you can go back and you can you can bring a change. You never know. You can bring a change. <laughs> Stood on tiptoes and sung their praises Many men and women have passed through changing faces and status Face it, since times of ancient Homo sapiens crave guidance in all races Look to people of the Lord to deliver messages Then shot the messengers, didn't like what they came with How long will we kill our prophets? Marley said it blatantly 124,000 men of piety Must talk themselves, their families and their communities Handful were chosen to rap nations Relate recitations to the masses and teach humanity One was selected as a seal of the prophets that the scholars say I won't take too much time but let me drop it I'm talking about Muhammad the inheritor of